my name is Brooke and I am a pencil partner with Belmont University. Today I'm going to be talking about art. We're going to talk about kind of what it is, a little bit about why we do it. We're going to talk of, about specifically fiber art. Um, that is one that typically gets kind of left out of the conversation. So when we think about art, we're not always thinking about blankets or scarves or clothes. Um, but we will be talking a little bit about that today. And then afterwards, I'm going to do a really brief demonstration with you on how to crochet with your hands. Uh, it's a little bit different than normal crochet because typically you would have a hook. But I really wanted to give you something that you could do anywhere, no matter what kind of supplies you have. Um, you can just grab a ball of yarn. That's all you're going to need. And it's something that is really good uh, for quarantine, too. If you're sitting there watching Netflix or whatever you've got going on, it's something that can really occupy your hands and get you um, kind of processing with your body. So to start off, um, what is art? Exactly. I mean, what, what constitutes art? Is it anything beautiful? Because if it's anything beautiful, then like trees are art and the smell of candles are art. Specifically, art is something that humans do. Um, we utilize our imagination or our thoughts or our feelings about the world and we channel them into our creative ability. And so we think of different ways to create something, to show the world how it is that we feel or what it is that we think. And those pieces, those products, that is art. That is the artwork that we see. And it's typically valued um, for the way that it makes us feel. And this is where fiber art really comes into play. Again, I mentioned it's one that we don't always talk about when we're talking about traditional art. But it's certainly something that can be made with a lot of intention and a lot of thought. For example, I made a blanket for my grandmother. And the time that I spent working with that yarn, it was meditative. I was able to think about all of these wonderful memories that I had with her and all the ways that she inspires me and it was really a very emotional process so that by the time it was ready and I was ready to give it to her it wasn't just a blanket it wasn't just a piece of work it was a tribute to everything that I felt about her because I had the time to really sit down and work through all of that while using my hands and that's how especially fiber art can be so expressive and it's something that right now, with all the chaos in the world, we can use to get down into our bodies and out of our brains and spend time really just being present with ourselves because it's really important. There's a lot going on right now. We can't control it all, but this is a really great way to work off any of that stress or anxiety. And it's something that you can do while you're in quarantine. It's something that you can do while you're, you know, watching TV or listening to a podcast, it's something that should be pretty accessible. So let's get started. This is what we're going to start with. So when you're hand crocheting, you're going to want to use something that's a little bit thicker. So I'm kind of waiting for that to focus. You should be able to see that this is a pretty good size thick yarn. If you use something smaller, your holes, the holes in your work will be really big and it's really just better to start, especially with something like this. So to get started, no matter how you crochet, even if you were to start crocheting with a hook, you're always going to start with a slip knot. So to do it with our hands, we are going to wrap two fingers around like this. This is your tail. This guy you're gonna wanna leave out of your work for the most part. When you're very, like at the very end, when you're completely finished, whether you're making a blanket or a scarf or whatever it is that you wanna make, you will go through and just kind of weave this back in and it's gonna keep your work secure. But for now, let's just try to keep this guy out of the way as best you can. So to do your slip knot, you see I've got the loop around my fingers. 
you are just going to take this piece, which is what is attached to the ball of yarn, and you are going to just slip it right through there, like this. Here's my tail, I'm keeping this guy out of the way. And then you're gonna go down, go down and grab this loop. We'll put one finger in that loop there. And then you're gonna take these two fingers out and just tighten that up. And the beauty of a slip knot is that you can move it. You can loosen it, you can tighten it, you can get it to do really whatever it is that you need to do. So this is going to be where we start. So you are going to stick two fingers in this loop that you've got. It kind of helps too if you want to hold this like out of your way. Like I said, we're going to try to leave this tail out. So sometimes everybody will find a hand position that's comfortable, but it helps sometimes to like to hold this guy aside so it doesn't get mixed up. So from here, you've got your your loop. Keep it kind of kind of tight here. And you are just going to grab the yarn here and pull it through. So there you can see is a new loop. So then you're just going to do the very same thing. Stick your two fingers in. And you're going to want to kind of tighten this just a little bit because if you keep it real loose, it'll be hard to tell um, in the next stage. It's going to be hard to tell what you're working with. So try to keep it on the tighter side, but no matter what you do, try to keep them all the same size. If they're all loose, then life will be okay. If they're all tight, life will be okay. Um, but just try to keep it consistent. So we're just going to keep doing that. There's my two fingers. We're just going to pull that through. Tighten it up. Do it again. Pull that through. Tighten it up. And keep going. And you are just going to do this until you get a length that you like. So if you wanted to do like a small scarf, you might could do something like this. And this way you're working vertically. So you're working up uh, to create a longer scarf. You may want to do it horizontally. And so you would have a longer piece, you know, maybe measure it around your neck or however you want to do it. And that would be the length that you would chain. If you want to do something bigger, like a blanket, it's the same concept. So you would just decide either how long you want it or how wide you want it. And that would be the number of chains that you would do. And then however you, whichever you decide, uh, the, the crochet itself will build in that direction. So I'm just gonna do um, enough to be able to really show you. I'm not gonna actually make anything, um, but I'm gonna do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I am back. This is what my chain looks like. You see it's kind of lumpy and folded over. This is the last loop that I have, so I'm just going to stick my finger right in there so that it doesn't fall apart and just tug. And what that's going to do is that's going to kind of make all of the loops closer to the same size. It's going to pull some of that tension through. So then, okay, this is going to be your foundation. This is the foundation of your work that you've got right here. Now with chains, which is what we just did, we just worked our chain stitches, it's, it can get kind of confusing. So I'm going to show you a trick. This is the front of your chain. You'll see here that there's almost like a V shape. Do you see the V? One side goes this way, one side goes this way. There's the V shape. Well, when you flip it over, you're going to see bumps like this here. This bump is going to be what it is that you're working into. So if you get confused or you get lost, just look for those bumps on the back of the V's. Now you can, if you want, you can work into the top 
of the V's if you choose. It's just your decision. I personally think that working in these bumps back here, it makes it um, look a little bit better when it's finished. But again, it's entirely up to you. If you can't figure out, you know, kind of what you're doing, it's okay. Just keep going. Um, this is a really intuitive process and really it's something that you can freestyle with a lot. So this is something to, even if you wanted to say you didn't want just this one color, you could pair this up with yarn from another ball. So you could do when you're first starting out and you do your slip knot, you could grab yarn like this and put them together and just work like this. That's okay too. Um, it is really forgiving. So to get started, now we are going to do what's called a single crochet. And when you're doing it with your hands, um, I think it helps you learn the stitch a bit better than if you were doing it with a hook. But we're going to get started. So if you look right here, this is our bump. This is going to be what we're working into. So we're going to keep that one finger in our loop here. And then we are just going to try to wiggle that finger into the bump. Do you see? So now I'm just going to try to loosen this just a little enough to maybe get a second finger in there and you're going to pull from your yarn and you're going to stick that right in between those fingers and you're going to pull it through one loop. So there you go. This is the original loop. This is the one we just pulled through. So then we're going to put our fingers back through both of those loops and then just pull it on through like that. And that is our first single crochet. And it's going to be a little bit loose right now, but as we keep working, it'll tighten up and, and it'll definitely become a little more um, forgiving. So now we're going to look for the next bump. Keep in mind, this is the back. So when you look at it this way, you're going to have a hard time. You're not going to be able to see that bump. If you don't see it, flip it over and see if you can find it and see right here that is that next bump right there so that's going to be what we work into next so we are going to take our fingers and just gently kind of pull this we're going to gently pull this bump up so that we can work our way into it Maybe do one finger. This is why it's good to do your chains just uh, loose enough to where you can work in them. And then, see I've got the two loops. There's one here and one here. And you're just going to pull this through that first loop. So then you've got two loops, and then pull through one more time, one more loop. So that is our second single crochet. And again, this will tighten as we go. So one more time, here's the back of our work, and here is that bump right here because these right here that that's part of your V on this side you can see that V so we're going to loosen that bump just a little bit so this is what it will look like. Loosen that bump. Try to keep your finger always in this loop because if you let go and you pull this, 
these stitches will come out. So you want to, and sometimes you can even just grab a paper clip or a safety pin and, and put it around this loop so that it can't go back through the yarn. And that'll keep it stable too. If you're having trouble keeping this on your hand as you work your way through, that will help. So we're in this bump, just kind of work our other finger in there and then pull the yarn through the one loop. Now we've got both loops on our finger, and then we will pull the yarn through both loops. So that is our third single crochet. So I'm just going to finish this row up doing the exact same thing that you've already seen me do. And then I'm going to show you how to go on to the next row and start again and work your way back across. Okay. Okay. I am back and I have finished my first row of single crochet. So this is what it looks like. I'm back at the end with the tail. Now to go on and work your way back this way, it's really easy. And by the way, don't get concerned as you're working into these last or what would have been your first couple of chains. If it's really tight, just do what you can to kind of work your way in there. It's not going to hurt it. It's okay. Um, it's just that as you loosen these guys down here, that tension kind of pushes its way towards the end. So it's okay. Just just get it um, done the best way you can. It's, it's not going to hurt anything. So to move on, this is the loop. This is my last loop here. And we're going to do just like we did um, while we were making the chain stitch. So you just stick your finger in there and pull more yarn through. Just like that. So that's called, you're, you're chaining one is what you're doing. You're making one chain stitch. And then you are going to turn your work around. So this tail will be coming off on this side. And from here, you just go back the way you came. It's going to look a little bit different because now you've got single crochets instead of chain stitches to work into. But the single crochets are actually a bit easier. If you look... You can see that V right there, those two, when you turn it on the side, there's a perfect little hole for you to work into. So the first one is right here, that guy right there. We're just going to go underneath that V into that little hole right there. Do the same thing. Pull up one loop. So now you've got a total of two. And then just pull your way through. And we'll go on to the next one. So this is your V here. So this is your next stitch that you're going to work your way into. Just go on in there. And sometimes it's easier to push rather than to try to pull. If that works better for you, have at it. You don't even have to put that finger in there. You can just do like this. I just find that it helps to kind of guide that yarn through. I'm going to push it through. Pull up that one loop there. Got two loops on your finger. And then just pull through. One more time. So we just, if you hold it up, if you can't tell 
what is your next loop. Sometimes it's easiest to grab that bottom corner and pull on that loop that you've got on your finger and you'll see which stitch you just worked in. It'll get bigger and you can see that stitch belongs to that loop. So the next one, when it's like this, it can easily look like this is where you're supposed to go, but it's really right here. That's something it took me a long time to get the hang of when I first started this. So you just go in, pull that through one time, like that, and then just through both loops and you just keep on going and you'll get to the end and you can start over but you can see how this will build up over time um, and I'll show you actually right behind me this is a blanket that I made with this very same method so it's very easy it's something that you can do like I said easily from home you don't need a lot of supplies supplies um, and I really hope you enjoy it Thanks.